So, homework. What is it? We probably all know. As a student, almost every student gets homework. Parents know that homework exists. Teachers know about homework. Everyone knows what it is, but no one's willing to question what it is or where it comes from and things like that and why it's such an issue. So before I talk about the origin of homework and how it came to be in America, I'm going to talk about me. So it's time for some me time. So every day I wake up around 5.30 to 6 a.m. in between there and I go to school after a long day, it's 1.51 and I'm tired but you know, school. And so then afterward I go to a few activities and clubs because I like doing other things and then school. And so after a few clubs, now it's about three. Then I usually have practice after that and practice usually goes until 4.30 to 5 sometimes. And by the time I get home, eat, shower, maybe take a quick nap or relax a little or take a break, take a shower and, you know, sort of get out of the whole school activity routine type of atmosphere. It's usually around six or seven. By then, I look at, I look through my folders and notice that I have so much homework to do. Now, as a student, I obviously do my homework because your grades depend on it and it's supposed to help you and things like that. So I do my homework, eat dinner, then it's around 10 p.m. Now, at this point, I still have homework left. I have to study for my tests and other things because seven classes, even if you see five a day, that's still a lot of homework each night. And so I do my homework, and but then at one point, at 10, I have that choice. Do I go to bed now and get the required 10 hours of sleep or do I continue my homework because it's gonna impact my school grades and other activities and things like that. So I make the right choice. I continue to do my homework. So. What this does is I have less sleep now and I and you're tired and you're stressed out and this sort of anxiety that builds up over time is not good for you at all, especially teenagers and students these days. And so now I'm going to switch gears and talk about the history in, of homework in America and why it's kind of interesting to see what's happened with our country. So, a brief history of homework. In the 1900s, early 1900s, um, the Ladies' Home Journal published a series of articles that was sort of about how homework is short, sort of impacting children's lives and taking away from what it means to be a kid in growing up and having fun. And so this led to, in 1901, California created some laws that took away homework for certain grades and limited it as well. And what this, what this shows is that early on in America, people saw that there were issues with giving too much homework and they took action and things were done. However, fast forward a few decades later, in the 1950s, the progressive education movement took over and soon the government and nationwide people were thinking that now education, we're falling behind, we need to catch up. How do we do that? You give more homework, you pressure students, you you make sure that everyone is getting a thorough education and by that, that means a lot of homework sometimes. And so then in 1957, with the launch of Sputnik 1 by Russia, America was behind in the space race. Now you may be thinking, how does this relate to education? Well, America was like, I can't be behind Russia, so we have to be ahead now. How do we do that? Homework. And then a few decades later, 1983, Ronald Reagan published A Nation's Home at Risk in which he basically said that homework works, so let's do it, let's continue it. And basically this mindset is what fueled homework. This is what has led up to a point where now we're just giving homework because we think it helps and because we wanna beat other countries and it's almost as if it's just sort of this belief that has existed and no one's willing to question why or where or how much, things like that. And what this does is, right now, so many students are getting so much homework and so much stress and anxiety that with all your activities, sometimes you have to make difficult decisions. And sometimes what happens is you have to choose between things. And oftentimes, sleep is what's left out. And the issue with that is not only are students becoming sleep deprived, but that increases more stress, more anxiety, which again, over time is not healthy at all. And it leaves students leaving, leaving them like this. 
in classes they're tired, sleepy, less energy, drained all the time. That's not healthy. So, teens, if, it may be surprising, but teens actually experience higher, level higher levels of stress than adults. And that's really shocking because adults have to take care of the home, manage bills, pay for their house, work, um, raise their kids, things like that. But teenagers, we just have to live, go through school, eat, laugh, have fun. But why are we more stressed out? And so, and in fact, 85% of teenagers in America are not getting the required 8 to 10 hours of sleep. And that's shocking because that means more than 50% of this country in, t in teenagers are not getting the required sleep. We're left sleep deprived and which probably makes us so angsty. And high school students can experience serious mental and physical health problems because of this. And that's not good at all. I mean, if we're, the f if we're the future of this country and we're being so stressed, there's something wrong. So the National Education Association and the National Parent Teacher Association thought, OK, maybe there has to be some standard to homework. How can we sort of come up with this system that allows us to give homework? Because we do know homework helps. I'm not saying it doesn't help. but. How do we make sure that we're not, students are not getting too much homework? Well, they came up with a standard where per grade level you should be getting 10 minutes of homework. And as you can see in the table, that per grade level for, for high schoolers should be getting 90 to 120 minutes of homework a night. And the issue is many high school students are getting way more homework than that because they're getting 30 minutes per class. And, it, and if you take seven class if you take seven classes in high school that's around 210 minutes of homework per night and that's not and that's not and that's way over this recommended amount and the problem with this homework isn't just that we're getting too much but a lot of it is just half of my energy wasted on random knowledge to be honest a lot of the homework that we're doing isn't necessarily helping us to learn and grow and develop as students that we should be additionally if, as a country, if we compare our education system with other education systems, we see that we're not that ahead. We're pretty behind. And you may be thinking, well, if we're giving all this homework, if we have such a great country, then why aren't we ahead? Well, I don't know. There's many reasons that come into this, but homework may be one of them. Homework, too much homework is not beneficial, but too little may be not enough either. And as you can see, Finland, which is outlined by the blue line, is doing way better than America at the moment. And it doesn't make sense. If we're doing more homework, then why aren't we ahead? Finland, is uh, their graduation rate is 93% compared to 78% uh, in Canada and 75% in the US. And about two in three Finland students will go on to college. And they they sort of have a completely different education system. Finnish students spend around 30 minutes, of, 30 minutes on homework each night, whereas American students spend roughly 75 minutes of homework. So we're doing way more homework, but we're still not ahead in terms of education. So why? Well, early on, Finland made things happen. They got independence in 1917, and after that, a few wars left the country pretty depressed, but you know what Finland thought? It thought that the way to get back was through education. It thought it made a bold choice to focus on education as a way of getting back into the major powers and reshaping the country. And to do that, what it did was it focused on education and it emphasized um, you know, growing as a kid instead of just doing homework. And they have their certain beliefs that, that fuel this too. First, they believe that children should be kids first, then students. And then the fact that school exists is because what, what is taught in school doesn't need to be taken outside of school because there's that mutual trust that whatever you're taught in school, you probably don't need to do more of it at home. And additionally, for every 45 minutes of instruction, 15 minutes are devoted to being outside and interacting with the world and learning that way. So what this does is this means that Students are not just students, they're kids. They're allowed to explore and do different things. They're not just growing up in this um, atmosphere where they're constantly being forced to study and do homework and do repetitive machine-like tasks just simply because it's the standard or the norm. So 
What can we do as a country? Well, it may seem strange at first to say that the government should get involved, but maybe it should. I mean, think of it this way. Students literally everywhere, schools across the country, everyone faces issues. And I think if the government um, gets involved, then maybe something could be done on a nationwide scale that reduces homework or reduces testing or things like that because the stress it causes is crazy and that's not healthy at all. As a community, I think we should all communicate with each other. Teachers, parents, staff, students should all talk to each other and try to discuss what's actually going on and why are we giving so much homework? Why are we doing things? And discuss and go through actually what's going on. That way, students don't have to be as stressed and can learn well. And so maybe if we make these changes, then one day the America will be ahead of other countries. Thank you.